Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year again where companies come out, specifically blogs, that want to actually talk about their favorite companies. They do pros and con lists, give them rankings, and then at the end of the year, they put it all together to say, hey, potentially you should be working with these companies so then you can get the best out of your money and time. So they do this for financial companies, for personal finance, on six separate categories. This is specifically, I'm talking about The Motley Fool. There's a couple other ones like Nerd Wallet and stuff like this or, or uh, Bank Rates that also does this. But credit cards, banking, stockbrokers, car insurance, personal loans, and mortgage lenders were the six categories this year. I'll only be talking about three of them, which is banking, stockbrokers, and personal loans, okay? I'll be real with you, SoFi, nor Robinhood, actually, because we're going to talk about Robinhood a little bit the, uh, on this whenever we get to stockbrokers, but none of them actually landed in the credit card area, car insurance, and most surprisingly, not in the mortgage lender section, which SoFi usually does very well in, but not this year. Maybe they didn't even take a look at it. It's such a small percentage of their business. Now, Monthly Fool, it's important to point out that they actually see roughly 20 million visits just in October, okay? If we, you know, sort of project that out on a quarterly basis, you're looking at about 60 million people coming and looking at Monthly Fool, not just for these types of reports. There's many things that you can look at on Monthly Fool, but this is going to be one of the bigger ones whenever it's specifically from people who are looking for a change whenever it comes to their personal finances, okay? 76 or so, 77% of this audience is from the United States, and it can be a big push for SoFi and these other businesses if they rank highly amongst these rewards. Now, to be honest, many companies didn't even make this list, so even getting into some of these is very exciting. Now, let's look at banking, banking accounts, and what they actually do uh, to get into this list. So they're looking at competitive APYs and rewards, account minimums and fees, uh, brand recognition, or sorry, reputation and customer satisfaction, and then features like ATM access, linked accounts, and brand access. Now, in my opinion, these are really superficial uh, features. I think that the big fight for checking and savings accounts is actually more features than what they're actually showing off. But you know what? This is how Capital One gets on some of the top of this list for best online savings account. I mean, 4.5 stars. Okay. Anyway, as we go down this list, and this is true, by the way, high yield savings account, Lending Club offers way more than SoFi, so they definitely deserve to be above this. Best checking account, sure. You know, SoFi doesn't offer too much in the checking account. Uh, and then all the way down, now they're not ranked, you know, just because we're lower down to the bottom doesn't mean too much but we got best digital only bank account for SoFi checking and savings. It's probably best that we read this as well. SoFi offers a dual banking approach by pairing its checking and savings accounts, which both earn competitive rates along with scoring high APYs. Customers gain access to several uh, relationship benefits as SoFi members, like earning rewards deemable for cash, fractional investment shares, statement credits, and loan payments. With no account fees and minimum balance requirements, SoFi is a great option for individuals that are looking for both a checking and savings account. Once again, I don't know why they're they're making this thing of offering both a problem. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Now, whenever we actually jump into this review, one of the things that struck me as being quite weird was whenever you looked at the cons list, okay? Combo account only, no savings or checkings. So if you go to open up a SoFi checking and savings, you get two separate accounts. Why is that a con? If you don't want a checking account or you don't want a savings account, simply do not use it. That's it completely can be brushed off as being non-existent. These next two require direct deposit, which is true. Um, but with direct deposit, it is definitely a big offering. So uh, it depends on how you look at it. Maybe those two shouldn't even be on there if you are using direct deposit, which you know gets you the welcome bonus and everything uh, as well. And then no branch access. This is actual con for people that want branch access or ATM. Well, they have ATM access, but no branch access. That's definitely a big problem uh, for some. But for others that are looking for a digital-only bank, calling them the best digital-only bank of 2025 and 2024 is definitely acceptable. Okay, let's move on to Stockbrokers and Robo-Advisors Awards. So the way that they looked at this is uh, through a bunch of different things, asset and portfolio options, account uh, variety through all the different types of American accounts that you can get, features like tax loss, harvesting, research and customer service, and trading platform and mobile app ratings, okay? 
Fidelity landing in the number one spot, best stockbroker overall, five out of five stars. Okay. Right after that, near the top of the list, SoFi, best stockbroker for beginners, 4.5 out of five stars. SoFi is an easy to, easy to use app with robust and valuable ecosystems to help manage your money in one place. SoFi's active investing is a great fit for beginners. Additionally, SoFi's active investing offers $0 commissions and low account minimums. Now, as we go down the list, there's lots of great offerings that people can choose from. And near the bottom, which it sucks because by the time people read these articles, it's like, are they even going to scroll down this far? <laughs> but best online trading platform, Robinhood got 4.5 out of 5 stars. They did very well. But moving on to the Personal Loans Award, which I'm very excited about, they looked at this in a couple different ways, okay? Competitive APRs, variable loan options, low to no origination fees, and then we also gave special attention to whether you have auto pay discounts, customer service, loan, you know, good loan amounts, or term offerings. Well, which one has been specializing in that forever? SoFi. SoFi got the best uh, personal loan offering on the entire list, Five out of five stars, perfect rating. SoFi's personal loans stand out in the personal loan landscape by offering competitive interest rates in a generous loan limit up to $100,000. By opening a SoFi checking and savings account and setting up auto pay, you can enjoy a 0.25% rate reduction, which can be stacked to a total of 0.5% if you do both. Plus, there are no origination fees, late fees, or prepayment penalties, and you can benefit from same-day funding for added convenience. Now, that's great. You know, you can go through the list and see all the other ones. There's not too many. Upstart made it on the list as well for emergency loans. Uh, but SoFi, top of list, top of mind, great. So to add my opinion here, this is just perfect customer acquisition cost lowering, right? Especially for personal loans where the average customer acquisition cost is by far the highest. To have this as the best personal loan option for people that are looking for potential amounts up to $100,000, that they can see, they can go to these websites, see that SoFi ranks the absolute highest. They will go to get their offerings struck there first. Now for SoFi, this is like the most profitable section that they have in their entire business is lending and doing personal loans. Now, with too much buzz in personal loans, we could be declining so many applications that even this extra you know, eyeballs on these types of products, we wouldn't even benefit from. Until Q3 of 2024, where SoFi said that they have a new loan, bit, uh, loan platform business. So with this part of the business, we'll be able to originate many more loans and things like Montley Fool coming out to say that SoFi has the best personal loans is an amazing addition that we could actually handle that amount of workload. Not to mention that if you have a lower credit score and potentially SoFi does not want to write a new loan for you, it still comes up as potential earnings if they actually refer you through the Pagaya program. So whenever you're looking at personal loans, it's not just the personal loan number that we have to pay attention to now. We have to look at personal loans, the loan platform business, and referred loans. All of those come from just that one shout out from The Montley Fool. So absolutely amazing. SoFi landing in many different categories, which is absolutely great and pretty high up on those lists just for the people that may not want to scroll too far. But ladies and gentlemen, I actually started a community discord for all of us to talk and share due diligence on companies just like SoFi. So if you want to join that, make sure you either scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description down below. This is the first day where we're opening up, but I really want to get to a thousand members very quickly. So if you guys could just hit that link, join Discord. If you don't have an account already, it's extremely easy to set up. And I've also included a bunch of links to get used to Discord and the type of community features that it has once you're on the platform. Thank you all so much for watching. Really do appreciate your time, but bye for now.